Greetings from Arizona. This is Tony Kuiper. In this video, I'm going to review a couple of good techniques for toning black and white images. Toning is a way to add color to a monochrome image that helps to set the mood. Sepia toning adds a vintage look and cool toning creates a more modern feel. We'll take a look at ways to do both. For this first image, I'll start with sepia toning. Toning generally looks best applied to the darker tones in the image. So I'll first make a dark swan mask using the Rapid Mask 2 module to select these tones. Then I'll use the layer button to open the menu and select solid color from the choices. This makes a solid color adjustment layer with the Dark Swan Rapid Mask as a layer mask. For the color, I'll create a sepia tone using the formula red 131, green 107, and blue 74. At this point, it looks more like the dark tones have been tinted instead of toned but this is easily corrected by using the CX module to change the blending mode for the layer to color. This blending mode is necessary and a very effective way for toning when using the solid color adjustment layer. This looks a lot better but the effect is maybe a bit strong. There are many ways it can be adjusted. One thing that often works is to try a different luminosity mask as the layer mask. To do this, click on Layer Mask on the Rapid Mask 2 module to turn on Layer Mask mode. This will make it so different luminosity masks will be directly applied as layer masks when I click their buttons. Good choices to try in addition to Darks 1 are Darks 2, Midtones 1, and Midtones 2. And I think the Midtones 2 looks pretty good in this case. Other things to try for fine tuning the toning include a modification, like levels. Changing the layer opacity. Or double clicking the layer icon to change the color. It's really up to you as to how strong or how soft you want the toning effect to be and what color looks best. The solid color adjustment layer and a luminosity layer mask just gets everything set up so you can play with the different options. Again, don't forget to use the color blend mode when experimenting with this solid color toning technique. The second method that works well for toning is a hue saturation adjustment layer with the colorize option turned on. To use it, first make a hue saturation layer using the CX module. Click colorize to create a single output color. Changing the blending mode to color won't make as much difference here compared to the solid color adjustment but I usually use it anyway as it punches up the contrast a bit, which looks good. Now, use the Properties panel for the layer to select a color. The preset menu choices include sepia, but the hue slider can be used to choose another color. Since this image has a more modern look to it, I'd prefer a cooler tone, something around 235 to 240. This isn't looking too bad, but the white tones are showing quite a bit of the toning color. So it might be worth experimenting with some luminosity layer masks to see if they might be useful. Again, click the layer mask checkbox to turn on layer mask mode. And try the same masks. Darks 1. That's a nice subtle effect. Darks 2 probably not enough of an effect. Midtones 1, definitely not enough. And Midtones 2, which doesn't quite look right for this image. So Darks 1 was probably the best choice here. Now, at this point, I'd probably go back to the Properties panel and do a bit more adjustment. 
I can up the saturation to make the effect a bit stronger or I can play with the lightness to see if that helps. Overall, with these toning methods, I want to use the layer to determine the color. And the layer mask to guide that color to the dark tones or mid tones in the image. Now there are, of course, several additional ways to experiment with toning in Photoshop. But I like these two techniques since the results generally look right for black and white images, especially when luminosity masks are used to control the process. I hope you'll give one or both of these a try the next time you work with monochrome.